now we will see the next topic so in the previous lecture we saw what is the benefits of test automation and now we will see the risk associated with test automation so here we are going to discuss the risk and as you know already that it is of type k1 so direct question from this topic so the first risk is expectation for the tool may be unrealistic so whatever you are expecting from the tool maybe you are expecting too much from the tool which is not realistic so expectation for the tool may be unrealistic for an example since we have the automation tool one may think now we can find all the bugs or we can do 100% automation testing is just a click away that's not the case we have to maintain the test case once the test case is done we have to execute them it will fail we again have to debug our test cases and then we cannot find all the bugs with that we know uh, by seeing the principle of testing we cannot find all the bugs we can reduce the probability of finding the bug but we cannot say that there is zero bug in the software okay so this is one of the unrealistic expectation once we have the tool next one the time cost and effort for the initial introduction of a tool may be underestimated so this is a very important point and these uh, uh, questions were asked based on this particular point okay sometime we may think that once we have a tool and then we will plan that okay within this much time with this cost and effort we can achieve it there is a possibility the tool may have some complexity within it and the training is taking a lot of time or people are taking a lot of time to get adjust to the new tool that's possible so this is also one of the risk that we underestimate uh, the time cost and effort of using a tool while acquiring the automation tool one may fail to include training effort if the tool is complex to use it may take time to get experience on it which will add up to the overall time for testing okay so this is the point which i said underestimating the uh, time cost and effort factor over over estimating or over expecting expectation from the tool is one of the risk and an uh, underestimation of time cost and effort is another risk next one the time and effort needed to achieve significant and continuous benefit from the tool may be underestimated so this point is different from the previous one so here what they are telling is the time and effort needed to achieve the significant and continuous benefit from the tool so we may think that once the tool is there within one week we will get the benefit we will start getting benefit from uh, the tool so that could be like underestimated since the tool is new we may have to adopt the existing test process so that the tool become an integral part of testing such adaptation may take time so we already have a test process line we are using that test process or based on that process we are working now if we introduce tool we have to integrate this tool with our current working process and that adaptation may take some time so this underestimation can happen for uh, this particular scenario next the effort required to maintain the test work product generated by the tool may be underestimated okay so first of all the tool is used to do something and then the maintenance part comes we may think we may not consider also the maintenance part in the starting so that is also underestimation though we have the automated test tool we may have to maintain it which requires manual effort for example configuring the tool for the specific project okay so tool is working that is fine but this tool should work with our project so we have to configure it and that configuration may take some time preparing a test specific environment okay so this is a very uh, real time scenario what they have explained here that you have a tool which is working absolutely fine but when you want to integrate this tool or you want to use this tool for your project that time you will have many complications and fixing those things may take time and this is also one of the underestimation then tool may be relied on too much we have a automated tool it is consistent but that does not mean that we rely completely or we rely blindly on it we blindly test that tool that should not happen sometime we can achieve the objective with manual testing 
with very less effort. But when we go for scripting, uh, it may uh, scripting to automate it. Or sometimes we blindly believe the output of the test execution tool without any verification. So one thing is that there are certain things which we can do it manually without any effort. But since we have a tool, we plan for automation. So that and the automation may be complicated in that case. Okay, so we should avoid such thing if we see that okay there are certain things which can be automated or which can be tested manually without much effort. We should do it manually then. And sometimes we don't verify the output itself. We say that okay this is a tool, it's running. If it's saying pass, it is passed. That means pass. It is right, but then we also have to look into whether the test environment is right or not. So we should not blindly believe that whatever is tool giving us is right. Then version control of test work product may be neglected since we have a let's see as we know for each release we baseline the test objects and test scripts but while using the automation tool we can execute the old test cases instead of the modified test cases so this is possible because tool does not know which uh, version of test case you should uh, load and run so if you don't maintain the version control properly, there is a possibility that you may run the old test cases or you don't have the old test cases, you only have the new test cases now because you are not maintaining the history of your test scripts. So this is another example, version control of the test work product may be neglected. Next one, relationship and interoperability issue between critical tools may be neglected such as requirement management tool, configuration management tool, defect management tool and tools from multiple vendors. So what happens here is if the vendor of all the tools are different, sometimes it's difficult to pass data from one tool to the other tool or to do that we have to develop the intermediate scripts. That's why it is preferred to take all the tools from the same vendor. So we are telling okay for configuration management we will take one tool for the defect management we will take another tool like that we can take separate separate tools then to integrate to pass the data from one tool the other uh, from one tool to the other tool we may have to put effort or we may have to develop the intermediate script so while testing there is a possibility or while selecting the tool there is a possibility that we neglect this intro uh, operability issues then the tool vendor may go out of business, retire the tool or sell the tool to a different vendor. So you took a tool from a vendor and now that vendor is no more in, in the business, same business. Suppose we purchase a tool to use for next 10 years but the tool provider stopped supporting the tool due to some reasons. So when we are selecting a vendor we should see what is the reputation of that vendor. Then. Risk of test automation. The vendor may provide a poor response for support, upgrade and defect fixes. So suppose you have some problem with the tool and then on time you are not getting the response from the vendor. This is also a risk. Next one. An open source project may be suspended. So you, you are using an open source project for your testing and that particular open source uh, project or the software or the tool is now suspended. So if you are using an open source tool for testing then there is a risk that the development of the or the update of the tool may get suspended. Next one, a new platform or technology may not be supported by the tool. So you are using a tool, you have purchased it, you have a license for next 5 years but after 1 year the technology changed or uh, the way you are developing it is changed. Now that particular changes are not supported by the tool which you have purchased. Yeah, so this is also one of the risk. There may be no clear ownership of the tool. So now the tool is there but no one is owning that. Who will maintain that? Because maintenance is one of the biggest challenge when you have a automation project or the tools. So there is no ownership. If something goes wrong, whom to contact? So these were the potential risks which we saw. Okay, The first one is expectation for the tool may be unrealistic. The time, cost and effort of the initial introduction of the tool may be underestimated. The time and effort needed to achieve significant and continuous benefit from the tool may be underestimated. 
the effort required to maintain the test work product generated by the tool may be underestimated. Tool may be relied on too much. Version control of the test work product may be neglected. Relationship and interoperability issues between critical tools may be neglected. So there are different tools and the communication between those tools are integrated if you take it from the different vendors. The tool vendor may go out of business, retire the tool or sell the tool to the different vendor. The vendor may provide a poor response of support, updates and defect fixes. A open source project may be suspended. So these were some of the risks which may get if you are using the automated tools. Or last one is the new platform or technologies may not be supported by the tool. So these were few of the issues which we get. Let's see the question which of the following is a potential risk in using test support tool. Okay, so now we have to find out the risk. Underestimating the effort needed to maintain the test asset to maintain the test asserts okay losing access to important testing information when needed see relying too much on the quantitative and qualitative assessment and then d is lowering the morale of the test team because of repetition okay so a is the answer because underestimating the effort needed to maintain the test asset so whatever test activities we do and then the maintenance part is underestimated. So option A is the correct answer for this.